Hey, I'm Huxley with Zscaler, and today I'm going to give you a quick look at how Zscaler for users and the Zero Trust Exchange help prevent cyber attacks and data loss while enabling your hybrid workforce with secure, fast, and reliable access to apps from anywhere. Specifically, we'll take a quick look at four key areas which I think are really relevant to your interests, and those would be defending against online threats, safeguarding your valuable or sensitive data, connecting users to your private applications and resources, and ensuring that users are having a fast and productive online experience. And I should be clear at the start here, this is going to be more like a quick introduction to these areas rather than a comprehensive technical demo. But with that said, I hope that showing you a few capabilities of the Zero Trust Exchange will help clarify where we think it could bring some real value to your organization. So let's go ahead and get started. Just to set the stage for everything we're going to look at, let's define what we mean when we're talking about the Zero Trust Exchange. Essentially, the Zero Trust Exchange is a cloud-native platform that acts a little bit like a switchboard, connecting users and applications and resources. It verifies each user's identity. It inspects traffic to ensure that no one is exposed to threats or leaking sensitive data. And then it enforces your business policies to determine whether or not to connect any given user to public or private applications and resources. And it's doing this all while also monitoring the overall user experience. We're going to look at how this all comes together, but let's start with a few capabilities that relate to user activity out on the public internet. And I want to also show you guys something that's really helpful here. There is also this tool called the Client Connector. This is a lightweight, tamper-resistant endpoint agent that is deployed to your endpoints. Once it's deployed, it connects those devices to the Zero Trust Exchange from wherever they go, providing access to sanctioned private apps and to whatever public internet resources you allow, and it's also helping monitor the overall user experience. And you'll notice there are some different symbols on the left here. Private access shows that I, as a user, I'm signed in with an IT user account right now. I have access to private resources that my organization has allowed. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. I am also uh, having all of my internet traffic running through the Zero Trust Exchange. That's the internet security icon here. And then digital experience. That's just indicating that my end user experience is also being monitored. And we'll talk about that more in a little bit too. So keep this in the back of your mind. I am also a user in addition to showing you the administrative side of things here. And right now on screen, what I have is the administrative portal that is where we would manage user experience out on the public internet. And for the purposes of what we're going to talk about, I want to start with something that's really important. And that's over here in the policy menu under SSL inspection. And this is a deep topic, but we can summarize it really quickly. Unlike the early days of the internet, nearly everything a user interacts with today is encrypted. That's why decrypting and inspecting traffic is so important. Without inspection, you'll never really be able to secure or control what's actually going on. And the amount of encrypted content which your hybrid workforce is interacting with every day is probably over 80% and might actually be a lot closer to 100%. And you'll know that traditional solutions tried to do this in on-premise hardware for small amounts of traffic, but Zscaler is fundamentally different. We built the Zero Trust Exchange specifically because that was the only way to decrypt and inspect and secure and analyze encrypted traffic for millions of users globally without slowing down their experience or negatively impacting their productivity. So this is where that inspection all gets managed, but we don't need to go into the details of, right, of any of that right now. Just keep in the back of your mind that this capability is kind of the foundation that makes a lot of what I'm about to show you so effective. So with that out of the way, as a starting point, let's take a quick look at some of the ways that the Zero Trust Exchange can lower the odds that a user will ever be impacted by threats coming at them from the internet. 
Generally speaking, online threats can be divided into three primary types or categories. The first are the ones that you see listed here under malware protection. These are more like traditional web threats, known threats in categories that we're all familiar with, viruses, and known worms, and known spyware, and stuff like that. And these are threats that the Zero Trust Exchange can block on site because their threat signatures are already known. We know what they look like, we block them. And that same logic also applies here under advanced threat protection. These are more advanced, more modern, more sneaky threat types of the variety that aren't really associated with traditional stuff. So this is where you see things like botnet activity and malicious embedded content and phishing sites and even content that might be hosted in countries that you just don't do business with and don't need your users to be talking to. But again, these are also known threats. These are threats that our cloud can block on site because it knows about them. But like we talked about a moment ago, the Zero Trust Exchange is inspecting traffic in between users and the content that they're accessing, including encrypted traffic. And it's using a bunch of advanced AI-powered analysis, which gets updated in real time around the clock by the world's largest security cloud. And that's all to help determine if something is malicious or not. And then we can allow or deny access conditionally based on what your business policies say to do. And so anytime that your policies say that a user is allowed access to something, but it's not a known quantity, it's not something where our cloud has a signature or definition to determine if it's good or bad, we need a different approach. And that's what the advanced cloud sandbox here is all about. The advanced cloud sandbox can intercept any unknown files, documents, applications, and drop it into what is basically a simulated end user's device that's actually in the Zero Trust Exchange. And then a bunch of AI-powered systems can observe if this unknown content is malicious or not just based on how it actually behaves once it's set loose in that environment. And based on its behavior, the cloud can then determine if it's safe to pass this content down to a user or if it's something new, a new threat that needs to be blocked. And if I jump back up here to the dashboard for a moment, you'll notice that there are a bunch of different threats of traditional varieties and more advanced varieties that have been identified and blocked in my demo environment. But if I scooch down a little ways, these are instances where a user was doing something that actually resulted in one of those sandbox evaluations. And if I just click one of these uh, entries here, we get a perspective on what actually happened within the sandbox that caused it to determine that this unknown file application document was actually malicious. And so in this case, we can see that this unknown object was 94% likely to be malicious once it was evaluated in the sandbox because a bunch of suspicious or incriminating behaviors were observed, like embedded content that's associated with known malware and the way it was trying to bypass built-in security systems and doing weird stuff on the local network and even down here, we can download the original content if we want to. That's helpful for security teams who might need to dig deeper into what's going on. We can see a full process summary of what was happening in that sandbox when this content was being evaluated. We can even see screenshots of what a user would have seen if this content reached their device. So this is just an incredibly powerful way to leverage the Zero Trust Exchange to help defend against threats that nobody knows about yet. Typically, that would be brand new emerging threats, zero day attacks, things like that. So the last quick point I want to make here and kind of my segue into the next topic is just that Everything we've talked about so far with regard to detecting and blocking online threats, it's obviously super important, but typically the final phase of an attack is an attempt to steal data. That's usually the goal when new malware is dropped onto the internet. So to prevent attackers at this stage, it's really critical that you've implemented really good inline security controls like you're seeing here, and also really good inline data protection controls too. So let's take a look at a couple of elements where the Zero Trust Exchange can help protect your data along with doing the security filtering that we've already looked at. In the same spirit as what we've looked at so far, I'm not going to show you everything that the Zero Trust Exchange can do around data protection, but I want to highlight just a couple aspects that I think would be immediately relevant to your organization. 
They are both found in the policy menu, but to start, I'm gonna jump up here to URL and Cloud App Control. This is the part of the service where an organization can manage user activity out on the public web, what kinds of sites they can or cannot access, what kinds of public cloud apps they can or cannot access. And in addition to blocking and allowing websites and cloud apps, there's actually a third action that I wanna call attention to. And it's this action called isolate. And you'll notice down here, I am an IT user. I'm signed in with an IT identity, so IT policies are going to apply to me. And one of those policies says to allow access to the web app Pastebin, but isolate it. So what does that actually mean? If I open up a new tab here and I go to pastebin.com, this is a popular site for anonymously sharing information on the web, but you'll notice I typed in pastebin.com and I can browse this site. I can poke around, do whatever I want in here. But look at the URL. It's not actually pastebin.com, it's Zscaler's isolation. And so what that means in practice is that this website is not actually being accessed by my browser. The Zero Trust Exchange is rendering it in the form of an interactive stream of pixels. It's almost like an interactive video that I can interact with as a user, but the organization has control over my activities within this site. And so as an obvious example, this is paste bin. So I'm going to try pasting some data in here. And no, I can't because that's a behavior that my organization has decided is not appropriate for somebody in my group on an anonymous data sharing site that I might otherwise have legitimate needs for. So with isolation, you can manage activities like copying and pasting, file uploads and downloads and so on. It's creating an air gap between users and the content that you allow them access to. Along with that isolation capability, there's another aspect of data protection here that I think might be useful to you. And that's again in the policy menu and it's under here, data loss prevention. This is the part of the zero trust exchange that can allow or deny file uploads or content uploads to the public web, not based just on the category or web app that it's going to, but literally based on the content that's being transmitted. And so in a really simple example, you'll notice the HR group is allowed to upload data containing social security numbers to whatever websites and applications they've otherwise been allowed access to. But I'm not a member of HR, I'm an IT person. So if I come over to my personal Dropbox and I open up a folder on my local drive where I have some sensitive documents containing valuable data and I try to drop that into my personal Dropbox, you might not be surprised to see it's not allowed. I can keep trying and keep giving it a shot, but the Zero Trust Exchange is inspecting the content of these documents and matching that against the policies that my organization has determined are appropriate. In this case, it's not appropriate for IT people to be uploading social security numbers to anything, so that activity is just blocked because it's not relevant to my job. So these are, again, just a couple of quick examples. I'm hoping you're getting a sense of what Zscaler for users can do to protect your users from threats and protect your organization from data loss out on the public internet. So with that in mind, let's move on and take a look at what this platform can do to provide seamless and secure zero trust access to internal and private applications. As we start to transition our focus from the public realm and public internet content over to private application stuff, I'm gonna switch my tabs here. This is called Zscaler Private Access. No surprise, this is where you manage user activity within private applications and private resources. Zscaler Private Access and the Zero Trust Exchange let you manage user access to your private apps and resources, whether those resources are hosted in your own physical data centers, or up in a private cloud environment like AWS or Azure or Google Cloud or whatever. And I want to stress something here. As an end user, you've already seen that I was signed into the client connector with my IT identity, and that's why my internet security policies were in effect, but the same logic applies to private resources too. The client connector is sending my client traffic to the Zero Trust Exchange so that all of my organization policies can kick in and take effect. 
But what I want to point out and what I want to really stress here is that this is not a VPN client. I am not using this to connect to the private network. This is only connecting me as a user to the Zero Trust Exchange so that my organization's policies can take effect. And that's where this part of the platform comes in because this is where the organization gets to define what I as a user can or cannot access in the private world. And here in the admin portal for private access, just like on the internet side of the house, I'm getting a broad overview of all the recent activity within my private application environment. And there's all kinds of amazing capabilities in here, and I'll touch on a few of them as we go, but I want to start by just pointing out all of those capabilities are kind of pointless if you can't get up and running quickly and smoothly. And that's why Zscaler Private Access is not just a zero trust application access platform. It's also an application discovery platform with some super powerful AI driven tools that will help you automate your deployment. So to get started with all this private access stuff, you basically just need to do three things. Step one is set up your identity provider. Just like we talked about in the client connector, you integrate with whatever identity provider you like. We're using Azure AD and Okta in our lab. You can use any standards compliant identity provider. And this provides the user context that is important when you're building policies, names and group and department memberships and so on. The second part of the setup is to deploy a resource that we call the app connectors. Just like the client connector connects your users to the Zero Trust Exchange, the app connector is a little virtual machine that lives in your application environment, your data center, your private cloud, and it connects that environment to the Zero Trust Exchange. So the Zero Trust Exchange is sitting in between users and private resources, brokering connections based on your policies. And these app connectors are easy to set up. They're just virtual machines. You can host them yourself. They're also built into private cloud platforms like AWS and Azure and Google. And they only talk to the Zero Trust Exchange. They're only making outbound connections, and they're only talking on port 443. So the process of setting this all up not only provides user access to private resources, but it eliminates the entire attack surface for your private environment. It's now invisible to the public internet. So the final step in this setup is to define your applications. You do that right here under application segments. And we have a bunch of samples in here, but I want you to ignore all of them and look at the top one, because this is what we generally recommend most customers start with. Don't define all of your apps by hand. It's tedious, it takes a while, and you might miss something if you're in a complex environment. Instead, define a single application with a wildcard, basically saying anything at our domain is an application now. Create this application and then allow it for your pilot users, the first wave of users. By doing so, back on the applications dashboard, something really cool happens. Right down here is this widget called Applications Discovered in the Past two weeks. And this is exactly what it sounds like. These are all of the private resources that users connected to in my environment where the resource they were connecting to wasn't already defined as a private application. These are newly discovered resources. So I might say, oh, look, the file share in our Splunk instance, those are IT applications. I need my IT people to have access to those, but nobody else should have access. So right from the discovery panel, I just say, let's add them as an application, hit the check box that's relevant and define the application right there. Turn it into a policy, allow it for my IT team, and I'm done. It is incredibly easy to do. It's really fast. It's really powerful. And what you're doing in essence is allowing the zero trust exchange to take away most of the manual labor associated with deploying zero trust application access. Once you've done that, you now have access to a huge range of powerful capabilities. The most obvious being giving your users access to the internal resources they need. But this also opens up the ability to do things like zero trust application access for your internal web apps for your third party users, vendors and contractors and partners and so on. And they don't even necessarily need the client connector because we can provide that access just using a web browser and some DNS magic. 
And this also allows for things like isolation of internal apps. Just like you saw earlier when I went to Pastebin, you can isolate your own internal applications and grant users limited access with capabilities that you don't want them having disabled because they're only seeing the pixels and not the actual resource. And there's even capabilities to help you secure your internal environment. Like that's what we're seeing over here under the inspection tab. You can leverage the Zero Trust Exchange to be on the lookout for exploits and flaws and gaps in your internal security landscape and give you the alerts you need to take remedial action. So this has really just been the tip of the iceberg as far as private access goes. There is a ton of value in this platform, but we're going to move on now and conclude the demo with a quick look at what Zscaler for users and the Zero Trust Exchange can do to help ensure that end users are getting a pleasant and productive online experience. So I'm sure by now you're probably wondering if I'm going to send all my users and applications and resources through Zscaler Zero Trust Exchange, how do I know that all these apps and resources are performing? There's a ton of different factors that can play into an end user's experience. There's public or private applications, which could be slow or just go offline entirely. There can be problems with the internet itself and end users endpoints can also have uh, some issues as well. So there's all these different factors at play that contribute to the end users experience. And happily, there's a part of this platform designed to address all of those factors. And that's right here. We call it ZDX or Zscaler Digital Experience. And ZDX is a fully integrated part of the Zero Trust Exchange. It's providing a global perspective on all of those factors that contribute to an end user's experience of working online. And so as we think about all those different factors that can play in, application responsiveness, the overall health of the internet, end users, endpoints, and so on, we need a way to quickly visualize what that's all doing. And we can do that right here on the ZDX dashboard with this global map, and maybe more specifically with this uh, metric that we call the ZDX score. And the ZDX score is a visual aggregation of all of those different factors that contribute to the end user experience. And you can see right now, the ZDX score has been kind of all over the place over the past couple of days. And as I look at my world map showing the regions where I have users globally, a lot of them are green, but there's more orange and red than I would typically see around the Midwest of the US. And that's because we've been hit with a bunch of storms all over the US this week. And so I'm not terribly surprised to see that some users might not be having a great time. And I want to illustrate what that can look like in practice. So I'm just going to pick one of these at random. Like, let's, let's see what's going on in Texas. So I click that dot on the Texas map. It's highlighting the application that's associated with a poor user experience in Texas right now, Microsoft Teams in this case. And we see that one user has registered as having a poor, or one user has been flagged as having a poor experience in Texas. And it's this guy, Barry. And I want to know why. Why is his score 10 out of 100? So I just click his name. And now we get this beautiful breakdown explaining exactly what's going on for Barry while he's trying to work in Microsoft Teams. I get an overview of his endpoint. And then as I scroll down, we can see his ZDX score for this application over the past couple days has been consistently terrible. He's really done in the dumps here with a poor experience. And I want to understand what's up. Is it Microsoft Teams? Is, is Teams struggling? So as I keep scrolling, we get information about the application that I'm looking at. In this case, Teams has been doing fine. Looks like it's been responsive, page fetches are quick, DNS resolution snappy, so Teams is not an issue here. Teams is solid. If we keep looking, we can see it's been 100% available over the past couple of days, so yeah, I'm not worried about Teams at the moment. As I get closer to the details of this particular user's experience, now we start to see some stuff that stands out. His hop view, the breakdown of the connection between this user and the resource he's accessing, this reveals something useful. It looks like his home internet connection is bottlenecking him. He's got a slow path in between his egress point to the internet and the nearest point of presence on the Zero Trust Exchange. So that's a red flag right there all by itself. And then as I keep going, we can get more detail about the endpoint that this user is working on, his device health. And there's more red flags. His CPU has been completely maxed out for days. It looks like he's consumed almost all of his RAM. Let's see if anything else stands out. Oh yeah, his hard drive's completely full. 
So not a big surprise. This user is having a bad time. His endpoint is totally saturated and he's dealing with a really slow internet connection. So this is an example of how you might identify an issue from the dashboard and drill in to find out what's causing it. But I want to conclude by pointing out that everything I've just alluded to, all those factors that contribute to a ZDX score, can also be configured as automated alerts. Like in this case, there's already a triggered alert for high CPU because we know Barry's having a bad time. So that allows you and your IT teams to proactively address and resolve connectivity and performance problems often before the end user even knows anything bad is happening. So that's pretty much where I have to wrap up. I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to Zscaler for users and the Zero Trust Exchange. We really hope that this is relevant to your goals and interests, and I'll look forward to having a deeper conversation with you and your team about all this sometime soon. Thanks for your time.